Here we are. Soldier's Peak. But we are wardens! Darkspawn flee when they hear our horns. Archdemons die when they taste our blades. I, for one, will never give up! I, for one, will never surrender just to dance on Arlen's gallows. Join us in the shadows where we stand, vigilant. Join us as we carry the duty that cannot be forsworn. And should you perish, Know that your sacrifice will not be forgotten, and that one day, we shall join you. This is the full story of the Warden's Keep DLC. To first activate this quest, you'll find a man named Levy Dryden, close to the exit of your party's You're camp. a hard woman to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy. Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Now, Levy of if the coins, human noble, Levy the trader. we can respond as follows. Dryden is a black name. Your family lost its land and titles. But Tan Kuzlin's son should be well aware that in politics things are seldom as they seem. Say what you will of my family. We are ardent warden supporters and have been since the beginning. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see... Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. But poor Duncan's... Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. Well, how did you know, Duncan? It's a bit of a tale, that is. But I'm the one who brought the Grey Wardens back to Ferelden. Well, I was one of the ones. There were a lot of us. Make us breath, I'm a bit nervous. Honoured to be here, really. Go ahead. Tell your tale. After King Marek freed us from the Orlesians, the Grey Wardens begged the King's permission to come into Ferelden, some sort of internal business. Me and a mess of other Warden sympathizers spoke on behalf of your order. Tan Logain was very much against letting Orlesian Wardens in the Kingdom. But Marek, Andraste, bless him, was a fair-minded monarch and he let them in. Well, why were the Grey Wardens cast out by so Ireland? So that's why I was there when the Wardens and their leader, Genevieve, presented herself to the King. The first Wardens in Ferelden in over a century. Proudest state of my life, that was. Duncan was a bit of a scamp back then. We were of an age and struck up a friendship. The King himself went with the Wardens on their mysterious business. When he returned, he rescinded King Ardlan's decree, and the Wardens came back to Ferelden for good. Why were the Grey Wardens cast out by Ireland, though? People say it's because the Wardens have become terribly unpopular. Just soaking up tides and not doing a bleeding thing for the Kingdom. I say that's bollocks, as recent events have shown. Marek was a bit of a visionary. A powerful mind, that one. In his travels with the Wardens, he must have seen how important their cause was. And been moved by it. Duncan was an easy man to like. That he was. So what promise did Duncan make to you? My family, well, past a bit checkered to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last warden commander of Ferelden back when the wardens were known as freeloaders. So King Arlen banished the Wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. Hard to say. After King Arlen died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. So what did you ask of Duncan? Asked for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honor. I've never heard of Soldier's Peak. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak. 
and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honor. Well, why didn't Duncan help you? Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden, and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar, said there might be useful things at the peak, but he never had the chance. And how will reclaiming the peak help the wardens? Soldiers peak a strategic and symbolic importance. Duncan said that it would be worth it right there. He also hoped to recover lost warden history and perhaps a few old relics. No one knows what's up there now. Lost history? I'm in. Your family's faith will be rewarded. I will help you. A thousand blessings upon you, warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. Now, when we're ready, we can head out to the party camp and head to the farthest location to the north. Where we will then be interrupted with a cutscene by Levy. And here we are. Soldier's Peak. Make us breath. Look at the size of her. What a fortress. I told you the map would get us through the tunnels. Andraste's ass. How did you find this place? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Just tell me. It came to me in my dreams. When I was a lad, I tried going through the tunnel by myself. Got horribly lost. But every now and again since, I've dreamt of it. Why didn't you mention this? I didn't want you to think I was some moon-addled simpleton. I've me wits about me, but enough of that. I'll follow you from a distance. This place has the stench of death. I expect there's trouble up ahead. Some people call this place the Lost Peak. Now, Before this area is unique peak, in that certain combination of companions will have dialogue together. But if you chance. don't have the correct two party members, it won't play. I'll show you all the combinations that I found. This is where the wardens trained and lived? I imagined it would be like a tiered ukluk with battle rings and many levels. Instead, it is drab, a castle like every other. Cheer up, Sten. I'm sure we'll be able to find some skulls for you to smash. This is the Great Warden base. <laughs> Looks like nug droppings over morning bread. Give me a month and a keg of ale and I could fix her up fine. Warden, I think your drunkard is hallucinating again. The Mabari is quite perceptive. Something is fundamentally wrong here. Something twisted. I urge caution. Soldier's Peak. Looks like it's seen better days. Better centuries, more like. Once the Wardens flourished, their ranks full, their caliber certain. Now, they even accept people like you, Alistair. Hey! Now, approaching up the hill, we will trigger a cutscene of some sort of strange flashback of sorts. Fall back! Fall back already! Taking the peak will not be easy, my lord. I gave the Wardens one chance to die with honor. Instead, they hole up like cowards. We follow the King's advice, then. Starve them out. But the Peak has months of supplies. Then we wait. When they are too weak to lift their weapons, we will send them to their final judgment. Whoa, what was that? Felt a bit woozy there. I'm not mad, am I? You saw it too. I've heard an Orlesian ballad about something like this. A beauty trapped in a dream. In the song, Belisa never wakes up. Your prissy friend here is making me nervous. Now, if we are a mage or have completed the Circle Tower main quest, we can have unique nut dialogue about the veil. The veil? The veil is what separates spirits and demons. Demons? Thank Andraste you came, Warden. <sighs> After you. Well, now that we know the veil is thin here, we can expect plenty of demons to pop up from now on. Now. This first fight comes in three ways. It's just walking dead, so I have a fire spell or weapon ready to dispose of them quickly. Or, like I've mentioned in my Carolus Cross video, 
you can use Topside as Honor, which I have equipped on Zev and Alistair in these cutscenes. They two shot almost every walking and dead that I have seen here. Dawnbreaker ain't got nothing on you, babe. Now, after killing them, loot the bodies of the commander to find a unique weapon, Warden's Crossbow. Now, this is the best crossbow in the game, but I have to restate, crossbows are not viable at all in Dragon Age. However, if you want to give this to your main warrior as a secondary slot, there are times that it can be useful. Now, before we enter the keep, make sure to head back up the hill to the far left and check on the statue to get a codex entry, as well as start a side quest in this DLC. Now this codex reads, it is the first history of Soldier's Peak. The Grey Warden base at Soldier's Peak was built in the middle of the Glory Age, several decades after the Second Blight was ended. Before then, Grey Wardens and Ferelden would take up residence in castles and forts that belonged to generous nobles. Warden Commander Asturian desired a fortified headquarters where his forces could train and live. He planned that Soldier's Peak would be a city unto itself. The defeat of the archdemon Zazikal was fresh in the minds of Ferelden people and many were willing to donate gold to build Commander Sturian's fortress. Now, entering the keep, we see more spirits. However, these seem harmless. Matter, there is more to leading men than sorcery, Avernus. I will remind them that they're wardens. Men! I won't lie to you. The situation is grim. Our forces outnumbered, our bellies empty, and our hearts are sagging. But we are wardens! Darkspawn flee when they hear our horns. Archdemons die when they taste our blades. So are we to bend knee to a mere human despot? No! I, for one, will never give up! I, for one, will never surrender just to dance on Arlen's gallows. So I propose here and now, in these hallowed halls where generations of our brethren stood vigil against darkspawn and evil, that we send a message to that fat bastard. In this sacred place, proud men, strong men, stood defiant and would rather die than submit to tyranny. <laughs> So brave, even when starving, and my great-great-grandmother stood with them. King Arland was a tyrant? Not much is known of King Arland. The war of succession that followed his death, now that was a piece of work, lasted nearly a decade, and almost burned Denerim and the palace to the ground. Loads of history was lost, but maybe there's answers to that inside. But I've gabbed enough. Lead on, my friend. Now, before proceeding onward, we can take a look at the ancient poster on the wall. This lists the names of Grey Wardens who fell in the Battle of Soldier's Peak. I won't list them all, but many of these names are names of the crew that developed Dragon Age Origins. And they're sort of parody names as well. Now, after reading, we can head through the door and we encounter some rage demons coming out of the damn fireplace, as well as an arcane horror. Now, after the battle, we can find a note on the right-hand counter, and it reads the following. Sophia, our Juan and his entire family have been slaughtered, even the children. The Juan line is no more, and the Arling belongs to the crown now. Arlen believes Juan was plotting against him. Juan criticized the king's spending on Wintersend. That is all. It was an idle world, spoken out of turn. The king has gone too far. His brain is filled with madness, and he clings to the crown like a drowning man clutching at a straw. Sophia, I beg you, help us. If nothing is done, more will suffer. Now, moving on to the room to the far left, you can see more walking dead, led by Commander Arlather. And on the top of the armory, we can find another note. Come 
Commander Arlaf has nothing interesting on him. Now, this note is a plea from Commander Arlaffer. There is sinister magic at work here. The men are seeing things and cannot tell nightmares from reality. The fallen return to life to attack again and again. We are assaulted by dark creatures, the likes of which I have never seen. Whoever is responsible is intent on destroying us all, the King's army and the Grey Wardens both. So, this Commander Arlaffer must have been from the King's army, not the Grey Wardens themselves. Now, these next two rooms, the kitchen, are either unexplorable or have nothing really interesting in them. However, entering this room, we see a bunch of rage demons, led by one boss-level rage demon, the Archivist. Now, after the fight with the Archivist, you can see a small book on the left hand side. This book is important for the side quest, it's part 2 of the history. Now, as he approached his 60th year, rumors swirled that the corruption in Warder Commander Arsturian's blood was beginning to take its toll. According to reports from that time, the commanders experienced terrifying waking dreams and heard his name whispered from dark corners of Soldier's Peak. It is said that Asturian would spend hours locked up alone in the Great Hall of the base muttering to himself, though no one was ever able to make out what he was saying. Many also believed the Sturian began, in secret, to draw up plans to expand his fortress, adding to it hidden passages and alcoves, all to protect himself from the shadows that pursued him. No one knows if he was able to complete his project. But see, madness loomed in the peak long ago. Now, the second piece of interesting info is the Archivist book, which triggers a cutscene. The door won't hold, Archivist. Almost. The, the truth must be told. What does it matter? We're dead. A grand rebellion so close. And to die here, a, a stillbirth. We never should have done it. Wardens aren't supposed to oppose kings and princes. Should we stand idly by? Another one? Rebellion? What's this about a rebellion? If only the book weren't a Rebellion burned. against the king, as it was already hinted. Perhaps there are more records. We can only hope. No more exploring the first floor. Now, heading up to the second floor, you can see a fireplace of a picture that might be important later. And as we go up, we can see a room that's irradiating fade energy. Approaching it further triggers another flashback scene. Make them pay for every inch, men! <laughs> Hold the flank! Avernus, we need you! Nelatev, Obrasov, Sifan, Nitvepan. Trusty's blood! What? Poor Avernus! Whatever it takes! Jamie A. Benfoto Victos! Press them! Press them now! No! I command you, fight the king's men! Ooh. So much death! Suffering, and oh yes, blood. The veil is torn now. Your soul is mine, Avernus. Acolytes, retreat now. The battle is lost. Avernus! What just happened? Oh no, more fighting. Now. This fight is easily the hardest fight you will encounter in this DLC. The trick is to ignore the boss abomination that will come up and try to suck your face, and take out the four walking dead corpses in the pools first. If you don't take out these corpses first, they will heal the abomination while you're trying to whittle it down. 
making this fight take much longer than it needs to. Now, once all the Walking Dead is dead, I suggest doing the Joester method of running around in a circle while your ranged opponents hit the Abomination, because it still has a lot of health and it still has pretty powerful abilities. Now, keep in mind here, when you whittle it down to half, even if you killed all of the corpses already, they will respawn with additional demons, so make sure you take out those as well. Now after you finish this fight, Levy will approach you. The warden summoned demons. Can't believe it. And my grandmother, she knew. Blood magic is not forbidden, and even wardens are people, not saints. I believed that my family was better than that. But answers may lay up ahead. Now, while in your looting, make sure you loot the Abomination to get the unique staff, Winter's Breath. This is a DLC item that is a tier 7 staff that gives cold resistance, increased cold damage, and has a cool, cold radiating effect. This staff goes best with Morgan. Combining with her unique robes and frost rings grants a very large boost to cold spells. Now, moving on past the large room to what will be now dubbed the Shrine Room, this is a simple battle which I will now skip ahead. Activating the Jam Jar gives us part 3 of the history. After Asturian's death, the rumors and theories became increasingly outlandish. One of the more ridiculous rumors told of Asturian's infatuation with an elven princess of lore, whom he was trying to resurrect in a secret ritual chamber through the use of blood magic and the princess's favorite food, jam. Warren Commander launched a thorough investigation into Asturian's secret plans, but was unable to cover any evidence that anything in Soldier's Peak had been changed. The stories were thus silenced. Now, entering the side room, we can see... Sophia? A dog will alert us to danger. Step no further! Get this annoyance away from me! This one would speak with you. Why... Should I speak with you? Because this peak is mine. This one is the Dryden, Commander, Sophia. <laughs> All these things. Grandmother? You have slain many of the demon ilk to get here. This one would propose a deal. I'm afraid Sophia's possessed, Levy. That or she's really let herself go. My great-great-grandmother is dead. I don't know what that is. And why should I trust a demon? What is one woman child compared to your might? Strike me down if my terms offend. A fool this one would be to betray the warden. Now, we could always just kill her. She didn't sort our dog after all. Fool! In which case, she spawns some undead. This isn't a terribly hard fight. But, let's pretend we don't want to kill her yet. Is there anything of Sophia in you? This one has tasted her memories, seen her thoughts and hidden places. But she is food for this one. No more, no less. Alright, tell me about this you deal. You can't be serious. There's nothing left of Commander Dryden. She's possessed. Your fledgling should mind its place. Meek, subservient, quiet. This one will answer your question. The soldier's peak traps me. This one sees so many tantalizing places in the Dryden's memories. This one would see the world herself. For me to be free, into the old mage tower you go and destroy. 
In return, this one seals the veil. No more demons. No more enemies. Your peak would be safe. Just let this one go into the world. What exactly will you do if I free you? This one will roam, this one will see, this one will feed. But without me, the veil will grow weaker. More demons, more misery. You choose just one of my kind, or many. Now, what am I destroying? The magics, all moving things, the very stone if you have the power. Something inside keeps my kind locked away. I'm here on behalf of Levy. Tell me more about Sophia. This one knows all, but will only talk after the tower lies broken. Before I make this deal. Yes. Now, this option we can convince her to seal the fade right now, but for narrative's sake I'll ignore this option. What can you tell me of the tower? You only must destroy. For your purpose, there is nothing more you need. And you promise to tell me more about Sophia? Warden, my family's been looking for answers for over a century. But not like this. Trust me, Levy. I'll support your decision either way. Agreed. Any questions Levy has of the Dryden will be answered. And what do I get out of this person? The Levy gets his questions answered. You get nothing more. Now, before I continue on the quest, I need to talk no, about the good. highlight of this nothing DLC. Sophia's Your armor. This armor is one can. of the best armors in the whole game, including design-wise. At tier 7, it also has the best stats in game. Now, the tiers of this armor are a bit finicky. The tier depends on the level your warden is when you first enter the peak. To get max tier... You have to enter the peak at level 18. Additionally, in Sophia's room, we can find her journal, which reads, It is done. The nobles have thrown their lot in with Arland. Arland, the snot-nosed man-child. Arland, who did not walk till his fifth year. Arland, who had to be pried off his nursemaid's breast not two years ago. The tares and arles believe him to be a simpleton, and easily led, but I have seen something in the boy's eyes, and it terrifies me. I watch the summer day processions from my room high in Fort Draken. The region has me for treason. My only guilt is being true to the country and the heart. My guard's tongue was easily loosened with a gift of a ring, and I am told the bands are fighting against my sentence. I shall pray, but not hope. Enough. I shall waste no more time with the wretched womanish lamentation. Death would have been easy, but fate saw fit to spare me, and I will seize upon this chance. The Grey Warns and the army... And the old commander is a weak wisp of a man. I will inspire the wardens, and Ireland will rue the day he spared my life. Now, skipping ahead to the Avernus's tower, after we kill some more walking dead, we can see a table with a journal on it. Avernus's journal. The joining witcher was crude. We take into ourselves the blood of the darkspawn in the most obvious way. Most die from the corruption. It is, after all, poison. There must be some way to refine the joining. Isolate the true power that is found in Darkspawn blood. I can feel the corruption starting to kick its toll on my body. I must not succumb. There is too much work to be done. Through magic, I've been able to slow its inevitable spread, but not stop it completely. I am starting to hear things. A voice, more beautiful than any other, that calls to me from the depths. In my dreams, I see the Black City. I am drawn towards it. There is something there. An answer to what the taint is. This taint that we share with the Darkspawn. Additionally, there's a large book in the corner, which triggers another cutscene. Day 32. The subject is not responding to the stimuli. Testing the pain threshold has uncovered nothing. Only three subjects are left. Day 82. If only I could reproduce last night's extraordinary success. Electricity is only a catalyst. The blood is the key. Day 97. Energy and blood. Repeated applications have duplicated the results. I conjecture that success can be induced alchemically. But there are no more subjects left. If only I had one more, or a dozen, the things I could do. Now, finally in this room, we see a single vial. This is the fruits of Avernus's research. 
something Warren can use. We could destroy it. Or drink it. Drinking it gives you two new abilities, based on your Warden's class. Now, the abilities for the Rogue give you a passive ability which allows you better sneak chance and Taint of the Blade, which is an ability that gives you increased damage, but the cost is that you lose HP. Every class gets an ability like Tainted Blade. Now, entering the room, you can see it's a large study room, and a cutscene triggers. I hear you. Don't disrupt my concentration. And like the journal suggested, Avernus is still alive. Even now, the demons seek to replenish their numbers. Are you to thank for this welcomed but temporary imbalance? The old wooden mage? You're alive? Only just. I have only a short time left. Careful. This man has dabbled in matters forbidden by the Maker. He may look frail, but don't trust him. So the Maker told you that, did he? Short-sighted men have forbidden my research, not any god. <laughs> Enough. Why are you here? What is your intent? I'm here to recover the Warden's base. Hmm. An admirable goal. But in order to achieve this, the demons must be cut off forever. I saw your experiments. They were necessary. Any tool, any iota of information that could defeat the fell demons was justified. As a warden, you should know that. Necessary. Having to relieve yourself after an eight-hour ride is necessary. But there's no excuse for summoning demons. <sighs> Charming. Just wait, how do you know I'm a warden? A combination of my research and blood magic. But even without that, who else would brave Soldier's Peak? Fair enough. I want some answers first. To what questions, I wonder? Ask. How have you survived this long? The Chantry foolishly forbids blood magic, but there are so many secrets to uncover. As my body decayed, I found ways to extend it. But that can only go so far. Tell me what happened here. What use would storytelling serve? The tyrant Arland is long dead, as is all our noble co-conspirators and the Grand Rebellion. Sophia's corpse may walk and talk, but she too is no more. How was Arlen a tyrant exactly? He ruled with fear and poison, his treachery pit noble against noble in terrible battle. We thought him a monster. We this is backed up by the codex entries we've read so far. The years has erased our failure, hasn't it? It seemed so pressing then, but the kingdom lives on. And what exactly happened to the rebellion? Too many mouths to quiet. Even sorcery can only go so far. So we met with Tian Kuzland. With him on our side, we had a chance of victory. Instead, the king's guard ambushed us. Commander now, Brad if we are human escape. noble, we are the Kuzlins. You're telling me my family rebelled? Is it? You lost many family members that day. I saw the Tian's head on the meeting table with an apple in its mouth. Arlen's butchers, no doubt, slaughtered enough Kuzlans to make them pliable. You had to know summoning demons was foolish, though. Perhaps, but it was survival. For months, I prepared the summoning circles, researched the darkest depths of the Fade. That moment was a triumph of demonic law. Dozens of demons, called by my hand. But, with so many variables, I suppose, calculation errors were inevitable. Ugh. He I refers so to deaths as calculation errors. Sophia knew of the demons? She gave the order. I would have summoned the demons anyway. Only under Wardens can true magical research continue. 
A chance to rediscover the secrets of ancient Tevinta. You do remember how it happened last time, right? The creation of the Darkspawn? Chantry lies told to subjugate oh, the Lord, mages. Oh lord, you poor sweet summer time. child. If only you knew what was happening in the future. And how do you know they are right? Their faith would have you swallow a great deal for small comfort. You seem proud of your actions. My only regret is that it failed, and that I never had a chance to make Arland pay. Don't you realize that you're to blame for all of this? From a warden, that means something. So tired, so old. Let me undo my greatest of mistakes. Let me cleanse this place. Then, then, I will accept whatever justice you feel I merit. Yes? What was the purpose behind your experiments? To stop the demonic tide, to correct the miscalculations of the past. Blood magic comes from demons. They could counter every bit of law I knew. But the Darkspawn taint, that is alien to them. And it has power. What kind of power? The Wardens use it merely to sense Darkspawn. A triviality. My research has discovered so much more. Hinted at even greater heights. This knowledge could not only save Soldier's Peak, with it, the Wardens could grow even more powerful. Now, whether or not Sophia is alive, request. we can go with Avenus to seal the veil. Drive you. Stay your hand until the demons are dealt with. Before we leave, however, we can now. get the last bit we'll of history the for the side quest. There, I will repair the damage I caused so long ago. There will be peril. The demons will fight us every step of the way. Come. Now, the last bit of history is on the right-hand side of a corpse, of all things. When Commander Asturian went to his calling in the Deep Roads, he did not have his sword, Asturian's might. Nor did he pass the sword to any of his successors or to any other Grey Warden. While some maintain that Asturian had simply destroyed the sword in his madness, Others believe he stashed it away, somewhere in Soldier's Peak. One young warden claimed that Asturian had once grabbed him by the shoulders, fixed him with an unravering gaze, and said, The sword will remind you of what is to be a warden. Speak your oath to me. When the shadows come, you must speak the words. What he meant was never clear. Except to us, we now have the quest updated, and we know where Asturian's might is, but we'll go back to that later. Heading back to where he met Sophia, if Sophia and Avernus are alive, we get the following cutscene. Lives! You were supposed to kill him! Sophia, you, is this a trap? Now it is here where scenes differ, depending on who you side with. I'll make sure to show this you how pleased. both ending scenes play Most out. pleased, Avernus. How does it feel to be in the open, vulnerable? Warden, I beg you, no. A demon can't be trusted. Have you learned nothing from my lessons? You have unraveled yourself, mageling. I'm finished hiding. After these long, bitter years, let it be over, once and for all. This one will give you the end you crave. This one will taste the Magus's innards. Now, no matter who you side with, they will summon two walking dead to fight alongside. Maelstrom has subsided. Now, if we sight of Sophia, we get the following scene. This one remembers the deal. Come, follow. Gossamer strands only stand between this world and home. Feel it? So deliciously weak here. So frail. The entire world should be as such. But this one will feed the veil. Make it strong. My brethren will not make it easy. Are you ready? 
This one will sew the strands together, make lattice with pain, experience, and exquisite agony. Then we begin. If we side with Avernus, we however... We must act quickly. The demons are clawing on the gates. The veil must be closed. I will unravel the summoning circles I drew so long ago. Waves of spirits and demons may come through. Dispatch them. I will begin. First, I must summon the magical energies. I feel them. Now, coming. this fight is a waved fight and much easier than the first fight here. Once the Zyzeem is dead, we can go to our perspective ending scene. Showing Avernus' scene first. It's over. The veil is strong now. Stronger, at least. I said I'd submit to judgment. And so I shall. Now, with Avernus, we can make a decision which affects peace. certain outcomes in DA2. We can either let him continue, or kill him here. If we do let him continue, we found out he does end up aiding the Wardens. With what time I have left, I will do this. It may take months or years for my research to reach fruition. When it does, I will send for you. Thank you for this, Warden. Now, we have the same choice of Sophia, who also appears in DA2 if we let her live. However, she has some interesting dialogue about Sophia Dryan herself, which we will now ask her. The veil is strong. This one has kept its word. Now this one will go. There is much to do. Not so fast. First answer Levy's questions. Ask, human. Ask quickly. Grandmother, Sophia, she knew about the blood magic then? Yes, she did. Avernus was powerful, useful. It suited her ambitions. But my grandmother was a hero. In her own mind, yes. She aspired to rule the land of the waking, to cast out the tyrant king, to mete out justice to those who betrayed her. Cousin Arland was so coy, so devious, years before she sensed the asp. The old king died without kin, and the Dryden sought to don the crown. But the boy Arland was thought pliable by those in power. Fools. The Dryden, powerful, charismatic, insightful, and ignored. They gave her a choice. Death or the Wardens. She bided her time. She waited. She lived. The boy King Arland spread terror, spread death, and the Dryden plotted. But Arlen's spies were too clever. She was discovered, and her last battle was here. And you, demon? How did you come to take her? When the Avernus deserted her, the Dryden would not die. Fierce pride, lovely, delicious terror. This one came to her. She would live in a fashion. And so she does. For this one is honest. Do you have any proof of this? Any proof of her good deeds and bad? Poor ilk of this body. This one has nothing. Only words lost in the wind. I don't know what to think. The whole family held to the belief that Sophia was a hero. Truth is, she was, and she wasn't. Thanks, though. Now, the truth. Here's the last chance to the kill Sophia for her armor. Our business is at an also, end. Also. Kill her because she's evil hunger demon, but you know. What? This one will grind your bones in my teeth. You've done it, Warden. Soldier's Peak is safe again. A good thing you took care of that Avernus. 
A blood mage in the Wardens. Common folk should never hear of that. Some still distrust Wardens, even in a blight. Crazy buggers. But there was no proof to redeem my family. Even if you had proof, Sophia's actions were damning. She wasn't a hero, she just wanted power. I suppose they were at that. For so long, I was focused on the past, on answers. But I think I would have been better off had I stayed at home. Enough of that, though. I find myself at a loss. You've got a whole fortress now. I suppose I should start plying my trade again. It was a pleasure, Levy. I might use the peak as a base of operations. So many bandits about, but none would dare come here. Nice place to store trade goods. You, of course, will get a sizable discount. We fought well here. The Arishak would be pleased. Looks like we're done here. A demonic invasion thwarted, a warden base safely rescued. We do good work. Now, there is the matter of the side quest that we've been doing. Once you have all four codex entries, approach the picture of Asturian by the second floor entrance and say the Warden Oath. This completes the quest and opens up a cache. This cache has a Shadow Belt, which is great for rogues, and a Sturian's Might. This sword isn't a great endgame weapon, but it's still a nice collectible in addition to leveled loot. Be sure to finish this quest before leaving, or else you will be locked out and unable to finish for the rest of the game. My overall thoughts of this DLC is... I love it. The loot is obviously amazing, but it also gives us a look at the moral gray area that Wardens truly inhabit. Wardens aren't automatic heroes, they are people who are given an immunity that some exploit. Was Arland a tyrant? Yes, definitely. Was Sophia doing this rebellion for her own gain? Almost certainly. Does Avenus, although lacking ethics and morality, do good things of his research? He actually does. Every part of this story has a hidden layer. Much like Soldier's Peak itself, it's waiting now to be uncovered. When we leave Soldier's Peak for good, and then we return, we will find it in a much different state. Levy now has a campfire and has brought his entire family with him. We also see animals running around. Sure enough, if we head over the overlook to the forest, we see deer grazing in the background. Repairing the veil must have brought the wildlife back here as well. However, expanding further on, we see that we cannot enter Soldier's Peak further, besides the courtyard area. It is permanently locked out. We also get access to the party storage chest, which is a blessing on its own. It allows us to store items here to manage space, which for collectible items like Asturian's Might is far better than selling them. It is such a great improvement to the game that they added it to both of the Ever Future games. Welcome back, Warden. As you can see, we've been busy. Clean the place up a bit. Even my brother Mikhail came out of hiding. Never will you find a finer smith. Also, got some goods stored here that might interest you. Buy them now before my cousins move it all someplace else. Hey, Levy. Did you tell your family about your great grandma zombie? About it. But I figured that it's not a bad thing to believe that you come from a line of lions. Even if the truth is a touch more complicated. Our family's belief that we were wronged. It gave us strength to make something of ourselves. Well, the keep sure looks a lot different. We've a big family. When you were away, we all pitched in. Hard to believe there were undead, demons, and worse around here, right? Any trouble with Avernus? I've not a peep from him. Seems to like keeping to himself. But I keep telling the children to stay away from the tower. Levy also becomes one of the best general good merchants, with high tier runes and potions on sale. The two high tier merchants plus the party storage chest makes this an ideal second base for any player character. We can also talk to Mikhail. You're the warden. My family owes you. Any weapons I make, I will sell you for a discount. You're Levy's brother? Not much of a resemblance. 
I have a family full of traders living a soft life, getting fat. I chose to learn the way of metal and stone. It keeps me strong. You're a weaponsmith then? Indeed. I have spent my life studying steel, dragon bone, and more. I learned all I could in human lands, and exiled dwarves taught me more. Give me the finest metals and materials, and I can make wonders for you. Now, Mikhail has access to Tier 7 armors, which makes him the best place to get armors in the whole game. There is also one last weapon to get in this DLC. During a random encounter in the open map, we will see the following scene. How did a child survive that? The crater is still smoking. It's a boy. Five fingers, five toes. That's all that matters to me. The Maker has answered our prayers. Let's go home, Marta, and raise the time. Now, this is obviously a Superman reference, but grabbing the star medal from the crater, we can bring it back to Mikhail. This... This is star metal. If you give this to me, I will craft for you a thing of legend. How much will it cost? Nothing. My family owes you much. Now we can choose between a long sword or a great sword. Both of the stats vary and a so bit. so it shall be. It is done. I call this blade Starfang. May it serve you well. This sword, Starfang, is the best judgment. weapon in the game, as Order. it's a tier of its own, which makes it a must grab for late game runs. If you get a long sword, you get additional attack and dexterity, and a great sword gives additional strength and attack. Both of which deal more damage than any other blade or weapon in the base game. And with that, we have finished the full story of Warden's Keep. Thank you all so much for watching and dealing with these long DLC videos. Stay tuned because we're back with 10 detailed secrets and things, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you for watching everybody.